Hey dudes, we're back. Uh, let's see. You notice a little difference from last time? Uh, I'll show you what I mean. Before, Marcel, or Mimian, I'm sorry, whatever his name is, he wasn't that high level, but, uh, check him out now. Yeah, he's gone up to level 18. I didn't want to bore you with the training, but I decided, since he's not really that good of a Pokemon, but he's the best I can hope for as far as Psychic types go, and he does gain uh, experience quickly, so I did some off-camera training, and it, it only took me about three minutes, but I really didn't want to put you through another Abra cap capturing incident. So anyway, yeah, Venon Venonat uses Confusion against Mimium. Yeah, oh, two damage, that hurts so much. Anyway, so, oh, light screen. Okay, so this is what Mimian does best. He uh, learns defensive moves that'll help the whole rest of your team. And this is a real, um, let's see, what do you call it? A, a milestone level up right here, level 19. So he'll help your whole team, and it's good that he's a fast Pokemon, because if he wasn't, then you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to get up these barriers in time. Okay, anyway, sorry, over here... Down this pass waterway passage, you can't go through here yet, but once you get surfed, there that's where the abandoned factory is at the bottom, which contains the best uh, Trinity legendary Pokemon, in my opinion, there is. And I don't really like the looks of Zapdos very much, but he's good. Oh, there's... what what does he want? 20 species with an Everstone. I'm gonna lie and say yes. Uh-oh, you've only caught 12 fi If you want the Everstone, I don't care. Why is that Everstone there? That Everstone serves no purpose at all. I... Oh, right. This is the rock tunnel now, so I need to teach somebody Flash. Uh... Oops. Well, I never think this part through. Let's see. Who's... Who wants to learn the useless move Flash? I really don't want to teach it to anybody that I don't want them to forget. Let's see. Million. Since I'm going to keep him around, he can learn Flash. And substitute... It's, if this is a good move, it really is, but I never used it with Mimian, so screw it. No, just because of who I am, I'm not patient enough to use Substitute. So he can be um, the party uh, Flash Pokemon. And yeah, perverts, get your minds out of the gut. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, let's see, is there... Yeah, there is an item over there. This is another... This is pretty much just a replica of the first tunnel that you go through. And the only difference is you got a longer cave and higher level trainers in Pokemon. So it's more monotony. But this is, in all seriousness, a pretty heavy duty cave. No matter how many times I play this game, I think I always get lost in this cave somehow. So while we're going through here, now I'll avoid all the trainers that I can, but there are ones that you have to fight. Alright, come on, Razor Leaf hit. Razor Leaf. I love this move so much. It's got... I think it was stronger in the past, but it's. I still consider it a really good move. So, let's see. I guess as long as we're exploring through this cave, as long as I can keep track of where I am, I can talk about something else. I can go on another tangent. Let's see. Um, I, I have been a writer for a really long time. Right now, at present, perhaps by the time you watch this, it'll have changed, but right now, I'm an English major in college, and I've actually managed to write an entire book that I hope will one day be published. It's called Magic Number. It might change, but for now, it's a 200-plus page book called Magic Number that I'm using for my senior project, and hopefully it'll do well in my professor's eyes, but the reason I talk about this is this cave reminds me of when I wrote a fan fiction about Pokemon, and it was long, too. I think I started it when I was 12 or 14, I forget which, and I had my Pokemon trainer character coming through this place also. What happened at the time was I was looking into the future, and you remember that grassland we went through earlier just before coming into this cave? There are wild Voltorb that live up there. 
And I was going to have the character stand in the middle of them, like, oh, good, I found a Pokeball. And he picks it up, and then it blows up in his face. And so it triggers this giant chain reaction. And it's a really... It, it's kind of an in-your-face, heart-pumping action part of the book where they have to get away from all these expo exploding electrodes. It's that classic scene where, you know, in the movie you see that guy jumping out of a building or out of a plane as it's, as it's just as it's exploding. I guess I have to fight one of these guys. But what happens later on, uh, the plot device comes in handy because you fight an electrode. Ouch, that hurt a lot. You fight uh, an enemy who uses electrodes. Well, I'm sorry, my character fights him. And he uses that same tactic that... He remembers what happened in the grassland, so he overcomes the enemy by having his own Pokemon explode right in front of him. Anyway, I never really got to finish that book. But I have finished Magic Number, and hopefully... You know, like I said, one day, hopefully it'll be on bookshelves. And I could rant about that one for a while. That's not a book about Pokemon. It's about... Uh, no, I don't want to learn Magical Leaf. It's about... Back in the day... And let's see... 14th century Europe. It's a magical realism or a swords and sorcery book. It's about a time, a fictional time on Earth, when monsters existed... And so did these creatures called secondaries, which were secondar secondarily human creatures. They're what we rem we know now today as elves, dwarves, gnomes, etc., etc. And what happens in the book is everybody... Humans and secondaries do not get along in the book. There are these racism issues, but they band together in order to defeat all the monsters in the world. And in the story, what hap the reason it's called Magic Number is because the word magic, I make it into an acronym. Oh, a Graveler. Wow. I was not expecting that. That's a good Pokemon for this point in the game. But magic's an acronym, and it stands for Mind Aptitude of Guardian Influence Control. M-A-G-I-C. You see how that works? So, I got the idea. I stole the idea from Golden Sun, really. Uh, Golden Sun is probably the best the best game, except for Pokemon, ever made for the visual the Game Boy Advance. And I really recommend you play it, too. Uh, so anyway, I stole Golden Sun's Synergy, which is psychic energy of certain types, certain elements of nature, like fire, wind, water, and earth. Magic is sort of like that, only it, it's a psychic power that anybody can use. Like in Golden Sun, the adepts, there are, there are people who could use their magic and they were called adepts. I'm sorry, their synergy. And only they could do it. Normal people couldn't do it. In my book, anybody can use Mind Aptitude of Guardian Influence Control, but it requires you to have uh, a really strong... Something traumatizing had to happen to you when you were a teenager because that's the time in your life when your hormones are going crazy and you're going undergoing a lot of mental stress. And because of that, it's hard to explain psychic power. I researched it a little bit and I'm still debating whether or not it's actually real or not. But supposedly what happens is you can use um, electrons in your brain or something like that. And you can create a, a force field around you using willpower. And I think I started liking psychic power whenever I watched Pokemon for the first time. Maybe that's where I got it from. But and anyway, in the story, the characters have these really um, cool powers. And... Uh, I, I really have to tell you the whole plot sometime. I don't think I want to do it while I'm distracted with a Pokemon game. And especially not while I'm just about to run out of recording time. So, anyway, I'm sorry. I'll get back to the Pokemon game, I promise, in the near future. But I just had to talk about that. Anyway, this has been Part 10. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.